it's becoming increasingly important that you understand what questions to ask, maybe in some cases more than how to write explicit code. Let me explain. I was reading this publication by Andy McDonald, which was published in Towards Data Science, uh, which is a medium publication. And he was talking about this module called Sketch, a, a new library that can help with Pandas data frames directly in Jupyter, and it's leveraging AI to do this. And with the popularity of ChatGPT, I was immediately interested as I see more and more of these tools begin popping up. And so as I'm reading through, you can see that it is a library available in PyPy, so you can pip install this library, and that it has two major functions um, that he will use, and I'll demonstrate what they do. But it's really nice because all you need to do is import it with your pandas, and you can use this sketch tool with your pandas data frame. And so rather than going through this entire notebook, I'll explain what it does. If you want to see it in more detail, go visit this. I'll leave a link in the description. And so if you want to install, I recommend creating a new condo or pip test environment uh, when using this because you might not want it part of your primary environment, then you're ready to go. So in the notebook, we have sketch, we have pandas as PD, and I'm going to use this load iris data set. And you can see that I quickly generate a data frame, and then I'm just sampling five random rows from this data frame that we have here. And so the way this library works is that you can ask a simple question such as how many unique values are in the target column and what are they? And we can pass that query statement to our data frame through this sketch library using the ask method. And so we could just pass in Q or type the, the question directly in there. And the output takes a few seconds to generate but we can see that it tells us that in this target column, there are three unique values and those unique values are zero, one, and two. Now that's what the ask method, it, it gives you some answer based on a natural language input and gives you some contextualized answer back. The interesting thing is that if we were to copy that cell, paste it below and switch to the how to method, it will now generate code that answers that question for us. And so it takes a few seconds, but you can see that um, we have this copy button over there, or we could simply copy this here, put that into a new cell, and you see we can get the, the unique values using this unique method. It stores those values as unique values, and then prints off this statement and tells us that the number of unique values is three, and unique value the unique values are zero, one, and two, which answers our question. And so let's say we have another question that we want to get after one, another one that's, that's relatively simple and straightforward. What is the maximum value in each column of the data frame? And so again, we can pass this to DF sketch that ask, I'm just passing that question and we can probably write this code relatively easily, but just really trying to show the flexibility with this particularly as a way to maybe even test your ability to write this code. And so it tells us that the maximum value in each column, including the index, 149, the sample length is 7.9, and you can see the respective values for each of the columns. And if we were to run df.max, we would get these values as the output. And in fact, we can, we can do that. And you see that these values match what we get from the ask. And so again, I recommend this because you can actually test your outputs for some of these things, especially if you're maybe learning on your own and just want some sort of reference to understand if you're doing this correctly, knowing that we can switch to the how to method and see what code output we get from there. Next, I want to take a look and ask a question that's sort of casual. Let's ask, how do I make DF columns cleaner? And so this is not precise language but we can see what this might do. If we pass this to the how to method, run that cell, again, it takes a few seconds to execute. And we can see that we get two steps that seem quite logical. We have a df.rename and it passes in a dictionary, which has the original column names and the modified columns. And this is precisely what I would do. I would remove the white space between sepal and length length and centimeters, and then also remove that um, centimeters in that parent those parentheses values. And so we can see that this is quite nice. We can copy that, make a new cell below, paste it. And if we execute this, I'm going to add a df.head at the bottom of this cell. 
we can see that the code generated from this how-to method works pretty well in these relatively simple cases. Next, I want to take a look uh, to see if we can make figures with these methods. And so we're going to pass in our, again, our df.sketch.howto, pass in this, and let's see what we get here. Okay. So let's see how this works. We'll plot this. So this is interesting. So we now have a hex bin plot. So this looks more like a heat map. And this is not exactly what I was expecting. I actually prefer the hex plot from Seaborn. And so let's modify this a little bit and see if we can improve this. So let's see if, uh, how do I make a hex plot from the sepal length column and the pedal width column and the data frame DF. And so if we run that, let's see if we get a slightly different output uh, where we actually just add more context. Okay, no. And then let's say using Seaborn. Okay. And this is what I was hoping. I, 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 I like the joint plots more because you also get the histogram on the side. And so I'll copy that below and we can see the difference, both of which are correct. You could just see if, if we specify which module we want to use or which library we want to use, we can get a different output. And this is actually the way I pref would prefer to see this data where I have a histogram, I have this hex plot heat map or false color map here, and we can still tell some information, but it's all about preference. So we can also use sketch in this how-to method to do more data cleaning. So we've already done it to improve the column headers. Uh, we can also use it to maybe replace our target values. And so if we do uh, df.sketch.howto, if we pass in this statement, uh, we I would expect us to get a probably another map that will map these values here to the target. So I'm asking it to convert zero to A, one to B, and two to C. And you can see that our target map is indeed set to a dictionary and then it will map that dictionary to the target column and then update that value. So we'll run this here. And again, we'll just do df. has so you can see the output. And now our target values have been updated using this code. And then lastly, let's take a look at sort of chaining multiple steps together. And so I want to see if we can perform PCA and generate a scatter plot from that data all using one query statement. Okay, so it took a little bit longer and that's not surprising. So I am asking to perform PCA, produce a scatter plot, plot the first two components, which would be component one and component two, and then also uh, color by the target and generate the scatter plot using Plotly. And so we have a number of, of, of commands in here. And if we copy this output, you can see that it, it knew to import Plotly Express, SK Learn decomposition, and then it will perform PCA generating two components. It outputs that PCA result as PCA results, and then creates a new data frame. It sets the PCA target, so it's now adding target back to that data frame. It uses PX scatter, so this is from Plotly Express of uh, the data frame plotting PC1 versus PC2, color by target, and showing that data. And we have a very reasonable output, all from one statement. So as you can see, it's increasingly important that you understand what types of questions to ask because there's many ways to generate the code. Either you're searching for answers on Stack Overflow or throughout the internet, or you will see an increasing number of these types of modules that are similar to JATGPT um, that can take in some natural language and output something reasonable that you can then use to build your own code base. And so essentially we've done an entire set of traditional data processing steps where we've written no code on our own, but rather copied code generated from this sketch library. I recommend taking a look at it. This could be a great tool as part of your own toolkit. If there's something new you wanna try or new libraries that you want to explore interactively, this could be a, a great way. If you enjoyed the video, like, Share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.